For Darwin, nature was savage. Every creature was locked in a desperate struggle for survival, ultimately ending in death. The scale of death in nature is absolutely horrendous. And sometimes it's not just that there's a lot of death, but that it's very unpleasant death. But in all this brutal chaos, Darwin saw a pattern. Darwin showed that nature was a battlefield and that everything was in competition. And this brutal battle, this war of nature, as Darwin described it, was actually a creative process. The pattern that Darwin saw was that the creatures that survived were those best adapted to the specific environments they lived in. For instance, some could handle extremes of climate. Others were brilliantly honed killing machines, perfect for catching the available prey. Still others were perfect to evade those who might be hunting them. But how did this harsh view of nature explain the finches on the Galapagos, where Darwin observed that the birds on different islands had different beak shapes? Somehow, those different beaks must be helping the finches survive. The finches of the Galapagos Islands have beaks of many sizes and shapes, and there's a reason for that they use their beaks as tools. Now, if you think of the type of tool you would want to crush a seed that's very tough, but it's the food that you really like, you'd want a beak like this, which is the type of beak the ground finch has. On an island where the only food is seeds that are hard to crack, a short, powerful beak will mean a finch will survive. But on another island, the available food isn't seeds, but flowers. If you want it to get into narrow spaces to get pollen and nectar that are very hard to get at, you wouldn't need a big, strong beak. You'd need a probing beak. So on a different island, where you have a different food source, you have a different beak shape. And this pattern was repeated across the Galapagos. It seems that the finch's beaks had altered to fit the diet of each particular island. And that was how one original type of finch had been transformed into many. But how had these changes come about? Here, Darwin had another clue. He could see it in his own family. As every parent knows, no two children are ever exactly the same. Charles looked different from his brother Erasmus, even though they shared the same parents. Charles's children looked a bit like him and his wife Emma. But they, too, looked different from each other. That was something he called variation. He realized that not every individual was the same stamped out like a toy from a press, but there was variation. Darwin realized that variation must be the starting point for change in nature. In any generation, the animals in a litter are never quite the same. And in the wild, such a tiny variation might make all the difference between life 
and death. Two penguins, for instance, might differ a tiny bit in the thickness of their blubber, a big factor if you live in extreme cold. In a harsh climate, the environment will select who will live and who will die. And slowly, Darwin suggested over many, many generations, these tiny variations would allow the fit to get fitter and the unfit would vanish. These variations accumulate and eventually new species branch off. This is evolution by natural selection. It is one of the keys to how new species are formed. And so, in 1859, after years of painstaking research, Darwin finally published his masterwork on the origin of species. It is still impossible to overstate its importance. It was really a quantum advance in understanding. It shook people up. It changed the way people thought. Gone was the idea that all species were created perfect and immutable taken as an article of faith. In its place, Darwin provided a proper scientific theory based on facts and observation. It is much more than the presentation of simply the idea of natural selection. It is a, it's a vision of how evolution by natural selection works. 150 years later, his theory has stood the test of time. What's amazing is that Darwin got so much right. Uh, his ideas largely stay intact today. 